Hi, my name is Craig Lewis. I'm the owner of Night Owl Circus Arts in Johnson City, Tennessee. And this is a video of destructive strength testing experiments done on silks in September of 2020 by Delbert Hall. If you're not familiar with Delbert Hall, he's a aerial rigger and uh, ETCP certified theatrical rigger who's very well known in the circus community as a world expert in flying performers and rigging for circus arts. These experiments were designed and conceived by Dilbert. All I did is provide a venue, help out a little bit, and shoot and edit this video. The main purpose of our experiments were to test some different methods of terminating silks. So the one that we use here at Night Owl Circus Arts is we lock our silks off with a rescue eight, but there's other common methods uh, such as using a prusik loop, using carabiners, using O-rings, and we decided to test these out and see how they compare in terms of breaking strength. So what we're doing in these experiments is we're placing a tremendous amount of force onto the fabric until the point where either it breaks or it starts to tear to an extent that the force that we're seeing in our load cell drops tremendously and at that point it's no longer necessary to keep pulling it until it actually breaks into two pieces. We consider that experiment done and move on to the next sample. So this first one we're seeing here, this is a webbing loop that's being used to terminate the silks with a sheet bend. And we got it up to 2,800 pounds of force before it broke. You'll notice in the bottom left corner, I have the speed that the video is currently playing at. If we watch this whole video at normal speed, it would be quite boring. So I tried to go into slow-mo for the, the fun moments and hurry through the rest. This is a hammock ring from Aerial Essentials. It's actually a rebranded fusion O-ring. It lists a breaking strength of 23 kilonewtons, or just over 5,000 pounds, which of course is the strength of the metal hardware itself, not the fabric. You'll notice that none of the equipment we tested reached the breaking strength of the termination device. The silks will always be your weakest link. We terminated the fabric using a half hitch on each end, and it reached 3,020 pounds before it broke. This next one's interesting. This is an Aerial Essentials hammock loop, which is a rebranded Sterling hollow block. There's been some controversy surrounding the use of Sterling hollow block as a termination method for fabric, because Sterling states in its documentation that the Sterling hollow block should never be used as the primary connection point in any rigging system, making this an off-label use of the product. I'm not going to weigh in on that debate. Our purpose in these experiments is not to tell you what equipment you should be using in your application, but simply to present the results we found. And this one was an especially interesting one. The Sterling hollow block is made from 6.8mm Technora fiber. Unlike climbing rope, it's hollow. There is no inner core. It has a breaking strength of 13 kilonewtons or 3,147 pounds of force. This test, surprisingly, just barely surpassed that number at 3,216 pounds of force. This device definitely performed far better than either of us expected. I do, however, still think there are better options out there than this product. This is a Fusion Rescue 8. It's rated for 50 kilonewtons, or 11,212 pounds, making the hardware itself stronger than anything else that we tested. In my experience, rescue weights are by far the most common method in the industry for terminating a silk, and they're what I use here at Night Owl Circus Arts. Surprisingly, it only reached 2,616 pounds of force before it broke, making it one of the lower results we got. It's worth noting that there are significant differences between what happens in a destructive strength test like this and what happens in the real world. This is a half hitch on a D-shaped carabiner. I do want to point out that this is misusing a carabiner. You are putting something that is too fat through the carabiner and creating some internal forces in the carabiner that are not what the manufacturer intended. 
as you can see here, it's still very strong, and really the carabiner is not going to be your weakest link anyway. It's going to be the silk, so as we're going to see here, the silk's going to break, not the carabiner, of course, but it is not the way that the manufacturer intended a carabiner to be used, and you are putting some forces on it that are not how it was designed. So this is just a different knot on a webbing loop. We reached 2,665 pounds of force with this one. These are tie-dyed silks. So these started out as white silks, and in a minute we're gonna test a set of the original white silks from the same batch as a control. These are the ones that have been tie-dyed and they're terminated on rescue eights. Now these broke at 1,998 pounds. That is a bit lower than uh, than what you'd expect from a, from another silk. The second sample was dyed at a slightly lower temperature, so we were wanting to find out if the temperature makes a difference to the breaking strength, and surprisingly, strangely, it actually broke at a lower strength. And then this is our control. This is the exact same fabric that was used to make those two tie-dyed silks. Now something interesting happens here. If you look at that carabiner, we both forgot to, I guess, double check our carabiners that the screw gates were locked, and that carabiner started to significantly deform. So that's a lesson in why we should lock our screw gate carabiners. It's pretty shocking that the carabiner started to see some serious damage at a lower strength than where the fabric broke, which should not be the case, but if, uh, if that had been locked, that probably would not have happened. samples that actually broke catastrophically. This is a printed silk. Now I don't know the exact process that was used, but it has kind of a floral pattern on it that's actually been printed directly onto the fabric. It's really beautiful. And you'll notice this one actually reached a very high breaking strength, much higher than the tie-dyed fabric. But it's worth noting that we terminated the tie-dyed fabric with a rescue aid and we terminated this one with a prusik which as we found earlier, the Prusik seems to be giving a higher breaking strength. So that may be a certain factor in that. Since we initially released these results online, it has generated some controversy, as I already mentioned, surrounding the use of sterling hollow blocks. This particular piece of equipment was really not the point of our original experiments. We wanted to test the performance of the Prusik knot not the Sterling hollow block specifically. So we decided to do some follow-up experiments. I also had the idea to test a triple wrap Prusik and just for fun, an experimental Prusik variant that I invented myself. For all the experiments in this second round, we used Sterling eight millimeter cord. This cord is not hollow block. Like climbing rope, it has an inner core and an outer sheath. 
with the inner core providing the vast majority of the rope's strength. This rope has a braking strength of 15.9 kilonewtons, or just over 3,500 pounds of force. Note that this is the strength of a single piece of the cord. This will double when we double the rope over, as we would in a standard Prusik loop. We terminated all of our Prusik loops using double fisherman's bins. We got some shockingly high results on the second round of testing. The first test you're seeing here is a double wrap Prusik. Unfortunately, I had my camera angle aimed a little too low for this shot, so I've done a split screen with the wide angle shot, which was shot at a lower frame rate. This reached 3,106 pounds of force, which is actually about 100 pounds less than we got with the hollow block, but still very high. This next test is a triple wrap Prusik. Prusik knots were originally created by mountaineers, and the triple wrap Prusik is often used outdoors in muddy areas where Prusiks have a tendency to have less gripping power. This final test is a knot that I invented myself purely for fun. I decided to name it the Craig Hitch. It's entirely experimental and currently completely untested in real world usage, but I just wanted to see how much strength I could get out of a set of silks. The knot is effectively two triple wrap prussics tied back to back. The nature of this knot self equalizes the forces between the two prussics. It does turn out to be quite difficult to tie. While the force seen by the two Prusiks is self-equalizing, the force seen by the two loops is not. It took me about 20 minutes each to tie these two hitches. They also took about 15 minutes of cord each. So this might not be the most practical knot for everyday use. We got this silk up to 4,096 pounds of force without it breaking. At this point we decided to back it off since we had technically reached the capacity of the setup we were using at that time. So we did not successfully break this silk. This was quite shocking to both of us. I don't believe either of us has ever seen a silk reach a strength quite this high in a destructive test. So in conclusion, what can we learn from these tests? Prusix performed better than either of us expected, and we think it's because they allow the individual fibers to slip through the Prusik until they're all self-equalized. I think that fabric termination using Prusix really warrants further testing. The industry standard rescue weight was surprisingly one of the lower results that we got. But personally, I fully intend to continue using them. For my purposes as a studio owner, I feel that the extremely wide use of the rescue weight in our industry provides some real peace of mind. The Prusik is comparatively untested, and there are a lot of variables involved here, such as, for example, the longevity of the equipment when exposed to abrasion. That said, I'm very excited about these results, and hope to do more testing in the future. Thanks for watching, and I just want to finish by mentioning that both Delbert Hall and I teach online aerial rigging courses. I'll start with Delbert's. Delbert's is called Hall Rigging Academy. I've got the URL right here so you can go look that up. It's an awesome course. It's online in recorded format, so you watch video lectures. And it's a rigging course specifically focused on circus arts and aerial rigging. 
My class is a live Zoom class that I usually teach once a month. Mine isn't quite as in-depth as Delbert's. It's intended to be a more surface level introduction to the very basic fundamentals of aerial rigging and it runs about two and a half to three hours. There is also a recorded option available, but I strongly recommend doing it live if you're able to over Zoom. And you can find more information about my course at nightowlcircusarts.com or you can find our Facebook event by searching Aerial Rigging Fundamentals with Craig.